we were looking at the video with the the fallen angels what video was that do you remember blood sweat and tears oh blood sweat and tears okay so this is a highly numinous video and one of the things that dr jung was looking for is ways to connect up the unconscious with the conscious mind because then you know a lot of people have things happening either in dreams or visions or things that they're thinking about that that they don't have haven't consciously processed yet as they grow up okay and so it's normal to have people going through various stages of psychological development right if you, if you and i talk about certain images that gives other people hooks it gives them ways to think about things and then maybe they process it a little bit more maybe they disagree or not but even the disagreements in in comments would give other people then a way to process things okay you see what i'm saying yes which i think is basically what a lot of psychoanalysis does is process things so it's in a kind of a similar kind of way but let's see how this works okay so the guys are walking into some sort of a museum right with mm -hmm. and uh, so let's just pick an image that you want to talk about here I'm not listening to the music, but. Yes, this, when Jim is looking at the picture, at the painting. Right, okay, so who, who is this? Uh, which which of the BTS guys this is this, Jin? Jin. Jin, okay. Okay, so he's looking at the picture and we need the, we need the picture, so I guess, so let's. Yes, but I have I have something to say about this. Okay. The previous, when Jimmy is in the background. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Okay, here's Jimmy in the background. I said that I have something to say, but I don't know exactly what I want to say about it. Just that. Okay, wait a minute. All right, right there. That. Yes. That one. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, right. So you're talking is, about this right here. Yes. There okay. is Jimmy in. in I think Shuga, Mini Yungi, uh, right behind the the the, the statue. The sculpture, uh, yes. Oh, okay. But uh, there is another uh, music video where there is this perspective when Jim is looking to something very, uh, um, I don't know, fascinated by it, the the thing he is looking at, and Jim right. is, in the, is in the background. Yes. Okay. Uh, the one is the spring day when Jin is looking at a washing machine. Uh huh. I don't know the relation. If there is a relation between between the the painting and the washing machine. We know that spring day very is very meaningful. Mm -hmm. You have already. Well, looking at, it, yeah, looking at the washing machine would be looking at chaos. And if I, if I'm right, this picture, let's go back just a few frames. Okay. This picture is pretty chaotic. Yes. Right. And, and so it kind of looks like you are looking into a washing machine, the way a washing, you know, a, a vertical, the way a vertical washing machine looks as in spring day, I think is what you're yes. saying. So this may be a reference to that. that I, I agree with you on that. Yes. Okay. And there are other music videos where Jean appears looking very, uh, what would be the right word for that? Uh, pensive, maybe. Yes, at, uh, at pictures and at things. Okay, right. That could refer to the idea that somehow we all have images in our heads that are that are images from maybe even pre-human times I, I i personally can point to one in my memory where um 
It was actually an image of a dinosaur that I had in a dream when I was six years old. And I know I could not possibly have seen that dinosaur. And so therefore, my inclination about that image is that that image was in my psyche, you know, maybe for 100, 100 million years or something. And, and kept getting passed down from all my ancestors. And when, when you're young, I think people tend to have very confused psychological states, okay, because there's a lot of things going on. You know, I was just listening to a Jungian analyst named Donald Kalshid, who has done this excellent book on trauma. trauma. He was talking about the idea that when we're born, we're, we're coming out of the primordial soup kind of thing. I mean, as we develop in the primordial state, all of these images have to be put into us, okay, during the time that we're in our mother's womb. And so they're all there, but they're all, they, they all have no context, okay? They have no real world, world context. They're just uh, chaos that's in our minds. And then as we grow up and see our parents do things, for example, then we quote unquote sort ourselves out. We, we sort out the complexity of an image like this, for example. I mean, this, this, would, this image would just be pointing to that chaotic state that we come from, okay? Okay. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay. And so when Jin is sort of fascinated by this, he may still be remembering a time in his youth when, you know, images in his mind were as chaotic as this, right? Okay. So, I mean, that, that's what comes to my mind. And, okay, so interestingly, we have two doors here, and one is dark and one is light. And there is another door, uh, I mean, in front of, in front of Jim. There, there is one door in each side of the painting. I think it's very interesting that there are many doors, or maybe some of these are mirrors, but these look to be doors or windows, but it looks like doors in this room. That's really a fascinating. And the light, the light inside the, the, the doors from the other side are on, right. and in his side it is dark. That's very interesting also. There is always a central door on the, the I'm sorry, I think my bracelet is making some noise. No, it's okay. There is always, there is always a, a central door uh -huh. in, I think, all of their music videos. Ah, interesting. That's an interesting idea. Yes. And the, 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 the BTS logo, uh, it looks like doors, looks like wings, and looks like uh, books, a book. Okay. And there is always a central door in, the, in their music videos. So let's go on here. Okay, so here's one of the guys is riding a bicycle around in this place. But I, I just thought it was interesting. We have a dark and a light door. Here's wings, as you indicated. Okay. Mm -hmm. And... Okay, so he's totally fascinated by it. And I don't know whether this has any meaning, but here's a severed head, and this is this is uh, Mercury here, okay? Yeah. Because there's the winged helmet of Mercury, I think. So I don't know whose head he's carrying there, but here, again behind him, he's got two doors, yeah. a black one and a white one, yeah. and uh, okay, and a a man and a woman, a masculine and feminine, sort of not paying attention to one another. I think that might be significant because we don't, 
we don't yet have these guys getting romantically interested that I've seen, but yeah, it happened in the Red Book uh, video. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. We did, but okay. So he's looking at the chaos. Uh, there are the two doors yeah. again in front of him. The, again, another black one and another white one. And that's interesting. Just tell me when to stop. Yes, you can stop there. Oh, okay, let me stop. Okay. And something that uh, is all there is, there is always a sofa. Too in most of in most of their music videos, a sofa with all of all of them sitting uh, on it or. Some sitting on it and other beside it, uh -huh. on the sides of it. Something yeah. Okay. Like so that so that's what you what we have here, and that to me that would suggest the collective. In other words, they're together. They're collective. Yes. And, and uh, so, in terms of um, in terms of Jungian psychology, this would be before one has differentiated himself from the group mm -hmm. right and Beh okay. go ahead um, go ahead beh behind them there is a painting of i don't remember the artist um, icarus I the fall i don't remember the name of the artist oh icarus icarus the fall okay so this is icarus the fall is behind him Yes. I don't know, I don't know what, if this you're, you're saying that Icarus is here. Is and the painting behind them. Yeah, okay. It will be clear later. Okay. And I would like to know if this uh if this if you can see more things about this painting. Uh, obviously Icarus is an important archetypal myth because it speaks to a young person, especially young people when they're first born, they're godlike. They think that they're God, <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. and, they, and they have to be humanized. And the way uh, Kalshid explained it is, it's like you're born with 880 volts of electricity coming through you, and it has to be humanized down so you can use it in the house which in, in the U.S. is only uh, 120, but in Brazil it might be 240, but uh, 240 volts. But here in the U.S., it, we have to transform the electrical power down to 120 volts in order to be able to use it in the house. And so a young person has all this energy coming through them, and it has to be transformed into usable psychic energy. So uh, that's interesting. It's interesting also this light here um, yeah. is interesting uh, coming up from below. Obviously, there, is, there has to be some sort of symbolic meaning to this, uh, basically a blindfold, but I don't know what it is. And then it, it breaks loose and they're seeing the light and Yes. Okay. All right. So what they're experiencing is pain, blood, sweat, and tears. Okay. And pain is a key Jungian idea because it's only through pain that you come to consciousness. And so everybody wants to avoid pain, but it's not possible. Encounter with the self. Um, mm -hmm which is Edward, Edward Edinger's book, but in it here. So Edinger says, uh, pain is the great enigma of existence. It is the perpetual dark companion to sentient being. I'm looking at this book, at Encounter with Itself. I've read this entire book into the website, and so people can find it, but I'm on page 32 of the book, and we'll William Blake did 22 pictures of the trials of Job, and, and they were, he engraved them 
uh, in about 1825, so long before even Jung existed. Uh, Jung was born 50 years later. So, but William Blake really summarized these ideas. And so um, then what Edward Edinger in this book is doing is explaining because he calls this his portable analytic hour. In other words, it's a very thin book, Encounters with the South, but he says if you if you read you can read this book in an hour, and actually it took me an hour and fifteen minutes to read it. So the video is on the website of me reading this book in its entirety. But uh, one of the key ideas is this idea of pain. And this is what these fellows are talking about. So let me just very quickly, I'll read this. Uh, going to school to pain. And this was written by a patient of uh, Dr. Edinger's. Pain says, if one would teach, he must first get the student's attention. I am an excellent attention getter. I am deep. If you would not fear me, be deep like me. I come from the center. A point is my sign. A stab from me is the cosmic goad. If you would not fear me, live each present moment with the same intensity that you experience me. I am the great purifier. Only the essential can endure me. All else is burnt away. I am the great valuer. All values come from me and my partner, death. I am the gateway to the mysteries. An image of me is your highest concept of the sacred. I am the quintessential now. I lie in ambush for those who miss their daily dose of life. This elixir, unconsumed, accumulates and overspills its little vial, raining its concentrated torrent on the negligent soul. I am the angel of annunciation for the awesome now. Time is a gliding serpent bearing precious jewels upon its back, each jewel a present moment. So that's the going to school to pain. And so I think that these fellows are really talking about this in the blood, sweat, and tears idea. Here, we'll go back to it. Okay. All right. So they're talking about the pain that they're going through. And of course, growing up is very painful. And here, the, the mirrors and two of the main doors here are very dark. And of course, there's light behind them, but it's it's very difficult to go through this transition. One has to go through from being a child who's, whose parents take care of you pretty much all your needs to starting to realize, and you can see the, <laughs> the, the throat being go, caught. That's okay. like, that's like a panic attack. And so you can, you can see how growing up is something that's very frightening and so on. So, and so let's take it a little farther. And so here, here there, all these contortions they're going through are different kinds of pain that they're experiencing, experiencing it seems like. And then uh, the, this fellow is floating here. So do you have a thought about that? Yes, I, I think this is related to the storyline they, they have, a fictional story. Remember, there I told you they are telling, also telling a fictional story. There is something about a uh, uh, swing. Uh, that, is that how, we, how this, this is called? What, what is it? I'm sorry. Uh, the, the, this uh, thing where kids swing themselves, it's the swing. Oh, the swing, okay. Yes. Okay. And it's also, uh, there is, a, st there is a, a path where Junko, the one who is hanging there, he, is hit by a car. Uh -huh. And the way he describes how he feels is similar to 
what is happening right there. I see. Yes. So he, he's out of control. He's sort of floating above the earth. He's not grounded. He feels upside down in many ways, maybe. Right. And there and, is a lot. Uh, there is a lot of references to childhood. To what? Childhood. I'm sorry. To, I, 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 I'll, I I'll try to run. <laughs> okay, I can't hear that's the That's my words. wonderful English. Oh, childhood, okay. Yeah. Childhood, okay. So there are many references to childhood. Where are you seeing? Yeah, not only, not only, oh, I, I'm saying this in this video only because of the swing. Oh, because of the swing. Okay, yeah. so the swing and is... This specific video is because of that. Okay. I wasn't planning to bring up about the the swing about the the sofa, but I I don't know why I'm talking All about right. them. Yeah, let's let's <laughs> let's just do it. We we have to trust ourselves to mm -hmm. see what strikes us to talk about here. Okay, mm -hmm. so going forward then, here he is swinging. And the and his position. Uh, Wait a minute. There you can see better the painting. Yes. Is the fall of Icarus? Mm -hmm. I think it is the name of the painting. I'm not sure. So, yeah. so who is this? Kim Tae Young. Say it again. V. 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 Okay. And so here he's he's feeling kind of disconnected. It seems to me, yeah. and you know that's a common experience of youth. I think it to feel kind of disconnected and you don't know whether you're connected to heaven or to earth and you're willing to sit out on a balcony or or take risks this this would be taking a risk you know somebody could easily come and push him off but he just doesn't care and so he's not really attached to to grounded reality his feet are off the ground and so on. Okay, so all right, keeping going. But here, yeah. here we're still struggling. And, and uh, here they're asking for the blood, sweat, and tears to be taken away. And they're struggling with the, again, and some pensiveness here where in youth, you're just trying to figure things out, I think. Mm -hmm. All right. It's an interesting look on RM's face there. Yes. Uh, it's just, it's, a, it's like a plaintive, you know, what am I doing here type of <laughs> And then back to the swing here. Yes, the name of this painting is The Lament for Icarus. The Lament of Icarus by Herbert Traper. Go you can you can go on in the video. Okay. If you Okay, at this point well So there, this is a spell that'll punish me. He's sort of in Never Never Land, maybe, and he has to come out of it. It's painful. And here, here's the the horns that you mentioned. Uh, yes. And that's a very interesting uh, development there. Not, it also appears in the first uh, the first shot video of the Wings era. Right. Begin. Right. Okay. So we'll we'll get to that in a, in due course here. But here here's um, here's the eagle. Now this is a reference back to Damien. Yes. Right, because Damien is seeing the bird flying in the in the painting above the door, and so and also the green uh, is. These are symbolic of sort of natural life. 
but your wings are devil's wings because you don't know how to control them, basically. I'm going to go back here. Your wings or devil's wings would suggest that, you know, when you're young, uh, you have all these energies surging through you, but you don't know what's really good and what's bad for uh, society. So you have these powers and you're trying to work out the chaos that you're born with. And there's your chaos. And, and so you get your, you get good and bad things happening to you. But also right here, it seems like the guys are now starting to get it together because their dance gets more in unison now. And so here's the Pieta. And this is the Pieta with, without a face, okay? So the, this is the child that hasn't developed. And here's the child that is discerning. The sword always means discernment, right? And cutting Wait through. a minute, then my voice is gone. Okay. It is Go back. <laughs> it is back. In the storyline, also, J Hope is uh, a, is abandoned by his mother when uh -huh. he was eight at a at an amusement park. Hmm. You're talking. That's about why it. the mother. The, the, in the storyline, they are telling uh, besides all these Jungian references. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the abandoned child then? Yes, also he is the abandoned child. Okay. He was abandoned by his mother when he was seven, seven actually. Okay, and you're yeah. talking about in his actual life now, j -Hope. No, no, not, not in his actual life. Oh, not the in his fictional, life. The fictional storyline they are telling beside this all this okay and so there is one picture i want to share with you about the divine child who's uh who is an orphan so just a moment i'm gonna stop that share and show you one other thing first okay so this is the stone that when dr young was uh, 75 he uh carved the stone himself. So it's about, if I understand the size of it, it's about um, 24 inches, maybe 30 to 35 centimeters on a side, but it's a cube. And he, mm -hmm. he actually carved in it himself as a, he's, he's the stonemason. And so he, carved this whole stone himself when he was 75 years old. And what he has here is in the center of it, the orphan, we're all orphans. And it's also the orphan's twin who is the divine child. Okay, the divine child that comes back and, and helps us. And, you know, we can get totally devastated in what we're doing or in what our life is about, but then this divine child within us, which is a, a psychological archetype, then will get us going on something new. So people always say that I've lived nine lives, which is sort of true uh, because I've, I've started many activities. I, I went from being a Marine Corps officer to a lawyer to a businessman and I've had many different lives, and each time I had to start again in, in some way in order to achieve that life. And that's what we all do. We, we all have that capacity to do it. So the fact that I'm doing this video right now is the current state of my activity as a divine child in the sense that you know, I had a turnaround in my uh, fortunes, let's say, and I uh, lost access or connection to my business. And so then I began to do my Jungian work about 15 years ago, and that has led to today. Okay, so that's my divine child coming to, through 
in various ways over many years. Yeah, you know, sometimes you can have something terrible happen to you and you decide to get drunk. Anyway, my story is that I, when I was uh, 18 years old, I was in an automobile that, that was in a head-on collision and the boy two seats over from me, fortunately I was in the back seat, but he was killed. And that was obviously very traumatic for me. And three weeks later was the Christmas vacation from my university. And so I got very, very drunk. It took three weeks to get out of my hangover. <laughs> it was really bad uh, because my, my roommate and I drank uh, a fifth of whiskey, Johnny Walker Red Label, in a half an hour. In 30 minutes, we, the two of us dr drank a fifth of a gallon of whiskey. We were quite drunk, and I'm, I'm lucky I didn't kill myself. So. <laughs> so a lot of times, young people who have traumatic experiences think that they can solve it by taking drugs or drinking. And these days, many of them are killing themselves, at least in the U.S., with, with uh, opioids. So anyway, okay. So that was an interesting scene where he's sitting in the bath. Yes. So do you have a, com uh, a whiskey called you? Okay, well, we were oh. talking about whiskey, so. All righty. Yeah, so uh, the whiskey could be, can be a girl and a disappointment about a girl for a guy, and it can be intoxicating. If you fall in love with someone, it can be very intoxicating. So he, here he is intoxicated with the whiskey called somebody who we don't know who it is, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Okay, do you have any comment about this? No, well, I was thinking maybe you have about well, the veil or... Yeah, it's, it's like, it's a gauzy feeling where you don't feel like you're actually connected with life. It's like you're living in a fishbowl and somebody's painted the fishbowl white so you can't see out through the fishbowl. <laughs> or put a veil over your head so you can't see. So a lot of times um, when, uh, you know, if we have a disappointment, our psyche may react and put a veil to hide, you know, to hide from us some huge disappointment. This image, you see that the child is being veiled by the angel, this angel. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you remember this story I told yesterday of the um, of the young girl who was uh, sent in to deliver a message to her father. She's a five-year-old girl, and she comes back to her mother and says, the angel won't let me go in, and her mother sends her back a second time, and she comes back in tears and says, the angel won't let me go in, and then the mother goes and looks, and her uh, father is dead. And so the, the angel is the veil that's hiding the reality of life from the young child who's not ready to experience that reality of death. And so in this case, um, where we're looking at this image, that might be that kind of veil, which is the veil that comes up to protect your sigma if you're not ready for something. Uh, so it could be something like that. Uh, so, and here the, we read about the pain, and so coming into consciousness is often very painful. And so as you're, if you're a young person, you may experience, you may feel like pain, but that's how we gain our consciousness. And if we're not ready for it, then it will be veiled, as, as this is the case. You see what I'm saying? 
Yes. It makes sense. I hope so. Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh. All right. So trying to, and here starting to realize uh, sort of the pain of a, of a hot piece of wax coming on the finger. And, but also that here now they're very much more in unison. And so they're starting to work out the, the chaos that they were feeling before. And learning how to, how to deal with it, but at the same time filled, filled with these energies that are way more than, than uh, anybody can deal with. So, and this normally happens in teenage years where young people get, have all these energies still flowing and they haven't given them control. And you see behind them, okay, here's the peaceful feminine angel and here's the, here's the violent, uh, it looks like the violent dev devil. It's actually uh, that same statue of Hermes, I guess, with the with the head cut off, the severed head. Um, yes. And so that's evil. And you've got all these powers coming through you, you know, on both sides. And so you're jumping around. It's like it's like being connected to a 880 volt electricity. And I want, and here he wants more of the you that he was interested in, obviously. Uh, when he obviously a very sexual move here. These guys. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. When uh, the previous, when Huso touches the water, he touches the path where the mother is reflected. Ah, yeah, let's, let me go back to that a minute. Is, is that here? No, no, let's go back. Some of these scenes are so short. There. Yes. Oh, yeah, okay, so there's the reflection of the mother, too, or the Pieta. Yeah, that's interesting. Very good catch. Okay. And now, now they've all been domesticated, and they're all wearing white, so they're very perfect little, little men at a perfect table. Everything's just right, and except uh, there, there's something red about the sky, which suggests that uh, you know there's more to life than just this perfect dining table. Um, and and so and he fires the the arrow and it, of course it splashes across the veil and so that's that's sort of like being pricked by the by life to get into life i think um and life becomes a bit chaotic yeah. And he feels poisoned by the jail of you. So once you fall in love, then it, it is a kind of jail. <laughs> because I agree. <laughs> yeah, because you're you feel totally um, consumed by the relationship between you and the loved one. Um, and so that's very interesting. And as he says, can't serve no one but you. Right. Oh, here's the here's the reference to the Grail. Okay, the Grail was poisoned, but drank it anyway. Okay, so the Grail is a reference to the Holy Grail, uh, which is the Arthurian legend of the the Holy Grail. And the, there are a lot of grail legends around, but let me just show you the book. Okay, so this book, The Grail Legend, is by Emma Young and Marie Louise von Franz, who was one of uh, Dr. Young's closest um, helpers during his lifetime. And uh, um, 
this was Emma Young's project throughout her life, and she didn't complete it before she died, so Marie Louise von Franz completed it. But basically, you know, there's there have been a lot of stories about the Grail legend, and uh, people have started have put on great huge searches for the Grail, the actual Grail, and and one legend is that when Christ was bleeding on the cross, his blood was uh, running out, and it was running uh, from. Uh, from the wound in his side, both blood and water, I think, were coming out. And so people, um, people went after, went, caught the blood in the grail. And, and so then that had people searching for the actual holy grail, the grail that had the blood of Christ just as Notre Dame claims to have the crown of thorns uh, that uh, Christ wore at the crucifixion. You know, it's not clear that there ever was actually a, a grail, a, you know, a silver chalice or anything that actually had the blood of Christ. But I think that, um, you know, psych psychologists, Jungian analysts feel that the grail is the human psyche and is, you know, we're it, uh, that our psyche contains, uh, you know, the essential sp spirit of life that also was represented by Christ's life. Um, and so that's what this reference is to, though. What they're suggesting is that, you know, maybe at this stage of growth, you're, you know, things are going wrong for you because you imagine that you could be whatever. And then you gradually find out that you can't do this and you can't do that. And, and everybody has that experience of, of finding limitations to their lives. And yet they have to get into life. So they have to drink from the from the grail and then you know they learn more and more pain and more and more limitation uh that is part of growing up actually i think so are you with me is this useful to you or interesting yes okay all right so let's go on all right so here now we have uh, someone i can't tell who it looks like rm maybe uh, yeah it's, it's rm and jungkook Oh, okay, there's Jungkook too. And I, uh, when I saw this this frame, I yeah. think it's the right way to say. Yeah. I remember that part of Damien when uh, Sinclair and Pistorius were at Pistorius' house, and, and they were reading books and looking at a flame. But there, this is not flame. This is green smoke. Yep. Well, so is it? Uh, so I, it's just that this the, this image was to me was very similar to that moment. Then Sinclair goes away. Right. Mm. He goes away to war. Right. It, it, he goes away from from Storia's house. I don't think they have. I, I don't remember if they have a disagreement about something they were talking about. Mm-hmm. Because this, this, uh, the Wings Era and this music video is inspired by Damien. Right. And uh, uh, actually, I think that Jungi is uh, more associated with Storios. I don't know if that's the right way to say the name of the, the character. Yeah, I, I don't recall offhand. Because uh, I. I I've read somewhere, I don't remember where, that Pistorius uh, uh, was uh, like a, a representation of Jung in Damien. Mm -hmm. Could have been. I don't know. Uh, yeah, could have been. I don't 
remember the, the where I the source where I read the, this. But yeah. that the, this is uh, the in the book. This is I think this is a moment where Pistorius tells Sinclair about the collective unconscious. I'm not sure right. that if all this appeared and uh, uh, new. I don't. I, I won't be able to tell it the 